Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today's trip starts here in Zurich, where I just arrived from London. My flight doesn't leave for another 7 hours, and it was really quiet in the terminal. So, I got checked in really quick, and dropped my bag. A quick 15 minute train ride to central Zurich, drop off my carry-on bags in a locker, then it's time to squeeze in a little 10k run. There are lockers and showers available in Zurich Station, and are kept very clean. Towels are provided for the showers. A quick dinner in the station, then it was back to the airport. I absolutely love how accessible the city is to the airport. This was my second time visiting Zurich, and it's truly beautiful here. When I got back to the airport, it was still extremely quiet. That was until I got to the midfield concourse, where the non Schengen flights leave from. It was a bit more busier here, but nothing too crazy. All the flights here have a required document check, and this needs to get done before boarding. Right before it closed, there's an outside terrace, where I got a good view of my aircraft tonight. This 19-year-old A340 has been flying with Swiss ever since its delivery in 2003. The interior was retrofitted not too long ago. This is my first time flying an A340 in 17 years. The last time I flew on one was between Vancouver and Hong Kong in 2005. Besides the 747, the A340 was the most memorable aircraft to fly on as a child. Boarding started about 40 minutes to departure time as the plane wasn't that full. Thank you very much. Thank you, have a good night. This aircraft has a very unique business class layout. On one side of the aircraft, it's one seat alternating, one closer to the window and one closer to the aisle. The middle is an alternating 2-2, and the other side of the aircraft is 1-2, which includes these throne seats, which I was lucky enough to grab for tonight's flight. This layout is also the same on the A330. My seat for tonight is 12A. This throne seat has an amazing amount of space and storage. Starting off to this seat, it has a three-point seat belt. The shoulder strap only needs to be attached for takeoff and landing. To the bottom left is a two-level storage bin that is great for shoes and clothing if you need to get changed during the flight. On the left is another storage area for a book or a tablet. And underneath the screen is a bin for your phone or some documents. To your right hand side, there's another two level storage bin that slides out. Behind that is a reading lamp, drink holder, a coat hook, and finally noise cancelling headphones. Under the armrest is the IFE remote and seat comfort controls. On the very top is actually another reading light and the headphone jack. And behind is a universal outlet with a standard USB jack. 
Finally, besides the seat adjustment controls, is the tray table. It was admittedly hard to get open at first, but it just needs to be fully extended for it to deploy. The IFE screen tilts back and forth, which is great, and has recently been updated. The flight tens came around with champagne, and the dinner and breakfast menus. The breakfast menu includes a pen, where you mark off on it what you'd like in the morning. We push out of the gate a few minutes late and taxi towards the runway. Despite being lucky and snagging a throne seat, the window view is right above the wing, so I barely even saw the two engines on one side, but this is no big deal. After crossing 10,000 feet, I got comfier in the seat and checked out the IFE. It's your typical IFE with the latest Hollywood releases, an extensive catalog of movies, music, and TV shows. Shortly after, dinner was served all on one tray to maximize sleeping time. I got the sashimi for the appetizer and the pumpkin goulash. The meal was excellently laid out with the vinaigrette for the sashimi and an eyedropper, which is very interesting. There was also cheese served with it, as well as cheesecake for dessert. This was very filling and tasted amazing. Right before going to bed, I used the lavatory to get changed into some nightwear. This lavatory is your standard Airbus affair, and is nothing too much special. I laid out the pillow and blankets. No mattress topper was provided. The bed was still comfy anyways. I woke up about six hours later, right before breakfast was served. As you can see with the windows that this aircraft is definitely showing its age. An amenity kit is provided, but it wasn't the Swiss metal box as normally provided. It's nice, but a very basic kit, and just carries the bare essentials. It includes socks, earplugs, toothbrush and toothpaste, an eye mask, and a discount code for some branded travel wear.
Breakfast shortly came after. It consisted of a small quiche, yogurt, with some small bread and pastries. Soon enough, we were getting pretty close to arriving in Joburg. To reflect back on this flight, I'm really happy to fly on this plane again 15 years later. The staff are very friendly, all the way from check-in to the end of the flight. And it was just a privilege to fly on this plane again. Swiss has taken the extra steps to keep this cabin refurbished with a new cabin tier, which is excellent. The food options were pretty good, and it kept me full throughout the whole flight. I found flying on the A340 comfortable, and it wasn't too loud. I don't know when or if I'll get the chance to fly on this plane ever again, but needless to say, it was great reflecting back on something so nostalgic to me. Touching down Joburg, it was time for me to get stuck in the airport for another 8 hours waiting to get a seat on a flight to Cape Town. This would cap off a 44 hour trip, the longest ever for me. Thank you. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this review. It's something so nostalgic to me. I'll see you all in the next video.